it comes to texturing in 3D, a lot of these incredible renders seem so difficult when in actuality, the workflow behind them is super simple once you understand how it's done. Look at these two images. They both have materials, lighting, and compositing. However, I'm willing to bet that this one grabbed your attention more. And that's no coincidence. So today, we're gonna to break down three different methods of texture. And once you understand how these work, you'll be able to take your models from beginner to pro in no time. All right, so the first and probably most common method is known as image-based texturing. It's literally going outside, taking a photo and slapping that on your model. That's it, there's not much else to it. And this is how you can get those hyper-realistic details on your model because the details are coming from real life. But the major flaw to this method is simply how limiting it can be. Let me explain. Check out this concrete image. I can slap this texture on my model, but I can't really modify it or get wildly different variations. Yes, I can throw on some rust, maybe some dirt grunge with other image textures, but I can't change that on the fly, not without seeking other image textures. Not only that, but if you try scaling the image up to cover more of your model, you start introducing seams. This is where you get that clear indication of where the texture starts and stops. And overall, it just looks disgusting. Now, of course, there are ways you can make these textures seamless and get slight amounts of variation to it. There's even an entire program that does this for you with one image to create a completely seamless PBR texture set. But the main takeaway from this method is that it's essentially a destructive workflow. Meaning, once you've applied the texture, that's it. But to truly level up, we need to look at one of the most powerful texturing workflows. And that is... Procedural texturing. This is the second method to create textures, and it's also one of the coolest. Just looking at some of the materials and textures you can make with this workflow, it's unbelievable. Wow. wow. It's similar to method one in the sense that we're using image textures, except these image textures are magical because everything about it can be modified at any time. Let's say I want to create a bumpy plastic material for this Nintendo 64 cartridge. Well, with this procedural Vorono texture, I can plug that into the roughness and also a bump node. And immediately, we have something super interesting happening. Just by dialing in the settings on this node and scaling it up by a factor of 10, you can see how quickly we're able to make an entire hard plastic shader with basically no effort. And by the way, this is one of the most simplest use cases. We can add so much more variation to this just by throwing in a second procedural texture like the noise texture and mixing that with the Voronoi. With just a few tweaks to both textures, you can see how intricate this gets. And again, because this is procedural, we can apply this to essentially any object. But to truly understand the power of proceduralism, we need to look at the concept of masks. No, not that mask. A mask is just a separate black and white texture that defines what you can and can't see on the shader. Anything that's black is completely transparent and anything that's white is completely visible. Now, using this information, we can layer different shaders on top of each other. So for example, if I want to create dirt buildup in the cracks and around the edges of this cartridge, then I need to implement a specific mask that finds all the cracks and does all the work for me. And to do this, we need a bevel node, a geometry node, and a vector math node set to dot product. So basically, this bevels the geometry procedurally, giving us new vectors on the geometry. We can then plug the normal information of the geometry to the dot product node, and this gives us the product of the magnitude of two vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. Please come back. This stuff is complex, and you're not gonna understand every single node, especially not the math ones. That's why I partnered up with Brilliant.org for this video. And before you jump ahead, I implore you to watch this section, because if you're interested in things like procedural materials, even geometry nodes, I think you're gonna get a ton of value from this. Brilliant has thousands of lessons available from basic math all the way through to AI, with new lessons being added monthly. Using Brilliant allowed me to learn all this complex vector math in an interactive way. 
and Brilliant makes the learning more like a game with challenges, so it's something you actually want to do. The course I would recommend just to get a grip on some more advanced math is the Multivariable Functions course. This runs you through the foundations of vectors and how to find multiple variables in 3D space. But honestly, just polishing up on basic math every now and then has been a huge help when learning things like geometry nodes. Brilliant is one of those things I wish I learned about sooner because learning things like math and even just basic STEM can be super overwhelming. So if you want to give Brilliant a go, click the link in the description or just head to brilliant.org forward slash smith to get a 30 day free trial. Plus the first 200 people to do that will get 20% off their annual subscription. Click the link and thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So coming back to this procedural dirt material, Let's build this out from start to finish to get an idea of the workflow. We already have the bevel, geometry, and dot product node, and we honestly just need a few more to make this really stand out. That is a noise texture, two map range nodes, a mix RGB, and a bump node. First, let's look at the map range node. This is going to allow us to hone in the amount of dirt buildup there is around the edges. So plug the dot product value into the map range value Currently it's inverted, so it's showing white where it needs to show black for the mask. To fix this, just flip these numbers here. So two minimum is set to one and two max is set to zero. Now to visualize this with color, I'm going to plug this into the factor of the mix RGB and set the top color to an orange and the bottom color to something dirt like. Again, we're using this as a mask. So the white parts are showing the top color and the black parts are showing the bottom color. Now let's plug this map range result into the bump node's height factor and bring that distance down to something super small, like 0.01. This is essentially done now, but we can push this one step further by layering another procedural texture on top. So with your noise texture, plug the factor into the value of the second map range node. Plug the result of that into the bevel node's radius and now we get some interesting stuff happening, but it doesn't really look correct. So to sell the effect of dirt buildup, we need to hone the settings in on these two nodes. Here are the settings I finished up with, and this is the result we got afterwards. Okay, now for the final step, mixing the two shaders together. This is probably the easiest part, and it takes one node, and that is the mix shader. So add in the mix shader and plug the plastic shader into the top and the dirt shader into the bottom. For the factor, you should know what to do by now. Grab your procedural mask, plug that in, and you've got yourself an amazing procedural dirt shader. Now that's honestly just scratching the surface of procedural materials as you can kind of go crazy with this. But it's so important to understand the fundamentals of proceduralism because it ties directly into the final method of texture. And that is... Mom, this tastes different. Did you put anything different in it? Texture painting. This is the method for accurate and artistic stylization on your models. It allows you to create hyper-specific details in precise locations. And it's just way easier than making some crazy elaborate node tree. So now that we know about masks, it's very easy to understand texture painting since all we're really doing is manually creating a mask and applying that to a shader. Let me explain. I have a basic rust shader here and I want to apply just a little bit of rust in the top right of the cartridge like this. Well, to do that, it's actually super simple. All we need to do is create a custom texture. So grab an image texture node and click new. Name it rust and I like to set this to a 4K resolution. Lastly, make sure the color is set to complete black. We're gonna layer this on top of the hard plastic and the dirt. So again, grab a mix shader and plug them in like this. For the factor, this is gonna be the image texture we just created. So plug that in, and now let's paint in the rust. Inside the texture paint workspace, there's a few things we need to do before we can start painting. First, if your model isn't unwrapped, then just do a smart UV unwrap and set the island margin to something like 0.02 and you should be good to go. From here, it's just as simple as painting. 
So with a white color, I can start painting on splotches of rust exactly where I want them to appear. If I don't like the strength or size of the brush, I can change it up here. And if I want to erase anything, all I have to do is press X to switch to the black color and paint it out. But it gets even better when we apply texture masks. Maybe you don't like just the straight circle brush. So you can come down to the texture mask, click new and hit this little pill icon. That will take you to the texture properties. And here you can change the type to something like clouds. And now we have a completely different brush to paint details in. This is like maskception. We have a layer mask inside of a layer mask. And honestly, this entire process doesn't have a limit. You can layer as many shaders on top of each other as you want. And I don't know if you've caught on yet, but the secret to pro materials is actually the combination of the three methods. These are not separate workflows, but rather tools at your disposal to create amazing textures. But in all honesty, textures are just one of the aspects of 3D. And one of the biggest problems I see a lot of beginners make is not having a blueprint or a guide on how to learn Blender. So if that's you, you'll want to watch this video right here.